you may have gotten inspired to maybe pursue a more minimalist lifestyle, but you just don't even know where to start because it seems like it's so overwhelming. Let's talk a little bit about how you can get started. Hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Freya Casey, also known as Healthy Minimalist Mom. So this is gonna be a chatty video and I just wanted to help you a little bit, maybe taking the first steps toward a more minimalist lifestyle. So what minimalism means to you could be so different from anyone else. For me, a minimalist lifestyle really means that I have capacity, I have a little bit of white space, I have more space to be, to live, to breathe, and not everything filled to the brim, be it my time that I spend on whatever I have to do every day or stuff I have in my house. And the most important thing that I can tell you that it's not a one-time thing and it's not a it's not a thing you do once. Even decluttering, to me, Marie Kondo is really awesome, but for me, that wouldn't work. I don't have an entire week or a whole month to take everything out of, you know, the, the cupboards and the closets and then just decide. All those decisions I made just happened over time and my lifestyle of course gradually changed and I think this is the most reasonable way to actually do that because as you keep decluttering and as you keep asking yourself more and more questions about is it something I really need to do is it something I really need to have you start changing your mindset and it's really those questions that you have to ask yourself that help you be more clear about what is it that I really want and what is it that I don't want? And to really in the future make better decisions, what you bring into your life, into your house, uh, what you commit to. And so that slow process is also a minimalist mindset thing in it, in and of its own that you don't want to take on 25 projects. It's too much clutter in my brain when I try to do too many things all at once. I try to focus on one thing at a time and try to do it as, you know, do it well. Do one thing and do it well and really focus. Plan it and prepare it. So right now we're remodeling our bathroom as a lot of you know. You know, I still do a lot of things in the house but I haven't committed to a lot of other projects at this time because I know I want to focus on this. I have to go to Home Depot frequently. I have to talk to the guy who helps me do this. And I have to, you know, research online and, and buy products. And I want to be able to devote my time and not only my time, but my mental space. And, you know, at night when I go to bed, I have things going through my head that have to do with my bathroom remodeling process. And so when I wake up, I, my mind, is partially with that process and you know envisioning what I want this to look like and so as we go through the process my mind can be present so that this will turn out as good as it can and uh, I try to do the same to a lot of people outside it seems sometimes like I'm doing a lot of things but I'm well organized so I always do one main project and then I you know a part of the day I fully devote to that and then when that is kind of finished for the day and I can kind of close the book and I have done all the things I need to do that day then I can shift my mind to something else and focus fully you know multitasking is really not working not working for me you can only do one mindful one mind less thing at the same time so you can vacuum and talk to someone on the phone or vacuum and listen to an audiobook or vacuum and listen to music but I can't read a book and talk to someone at the same time because these are two activities that need my full brain power and so really assessing and that's what I did. I started one thing at a time. I started assessing things I do. What do I do with my time? And I started thinking about, is it something I necessarily have to do? 
I became clear about what is my end goal? What is my perfect day like? What is my ultimate lifestyle that I want to achieve? And what do I want to do in my life? And so everything that came into my day that, you know, offers or requests, it was so much easier than to evaluate if I let it in my life, in my space, in my time, you know, in my schedule, or if it's something that I want to leave out. And it's so much easier than to say yes or no to something because First, you have to become clear. And it's the same for decluttering and for your house. When you have that clear vision and literally have a picture, an image in your mind or what I do on Pinterest, I have vision boards that I created. Let me just pull it up. I have a bunch of vision boards that I created just about different rooms and the house. So for example, for my bathroom, I created a vision board where I just have all the ideas that I loved so that, you know, I could show the guy that helps me do it and I could order the materials. I have all these ideas, all these little ideas collected so that I can create this vision in my mind. And I have this about a lot of other spaces in my house or this is the attic we want to you know, right now there's nothing up there and eventually we want to make a room up there. And so I just collected ideas and that's what I do with a lot of things. I do this with parenting. I create these vision boards that kind of resemble that ideal, perfect situation that I eventually want to have. It really helps me to organize my ideas in those Pinterest vision boards, whether it's health, whether it's parenting, whether it's organizing, whether it's remodeling, whether it's anything about learning professionally, it really helps me to organize it into chunks and into projects that start coming together one little thing at a time. And so every day I do something. I declutter constantly. I go through my house and then sometimes I take on a little bit bigger projects where I I do my entire closet, but it's still just one aspect. I have never done and ripped out all my clothes that I own, like my wardrobes all over the house and my jackets and my shoes. I've never done that. I just a little bit at a time, just take one drawer and pull it out and just think about Is this what I need or is there anything? And once you reduce, it's so much easier to find better systems and to get more organized and to really have a home for everything. But that only happens as you gradually declutter. I think for me, being overwhelmed, even just taking on these huge projects, I can't be in this minimalist mindset when I just have clutter all over the house and I rip everything out. It discourages me because I just don't have the time. Personally, I just don't have the time to have days and days and make an entire mess of my house. I don't know, when you have kids and you have an ongoing life, and you have a work at home all the time, every day, I just cannot pull out everything and do just the entire thing because it also takes me time to be clear about what I need and what I don't need. So, of course, my number one advice is really get started right now. You can do something right now. Open one drawer, even just a part of a drawer, and just five things, declutter them. And if you do this every single day, it really adds up. You may make yourself a list of all the spaces that you have in your house and all the areas in your life that you feel you're overwhelmed with most right now, and then do one little thing at a time. So for example, if you say, in your bathroom, there's, it's like too much stuff and cosmetics. Well, maybe just put that down. And so you may just do one cabinet. You may just want to do one shelf out of the cabinet and just do a little bit at a time or just do your stuff. And the next day, ask your husband to go through his stuff together or your children. Just, you know, take one of your children and say, okay, this is your stuff. Can we declutter it? What do you really need? And uh, I highly recommend that you do it together with someone unless someone absolutely does not care and trust you to get rid of anything. But I wouldn't want to impose my judgment on someone else because it's their life and it's their decision what they really need and want and what means something to them or what doesn't. And then if you feel, for example, overwhelmed at work, then maybe just take that as a project 
and think about small areas. Um, maybe the filing system could be changed or maybe the way you deal with your boss or maybe the way you handle some things uh, when you come in contact with your, with your customers, research it and you know just make a vision board just for that little area with tips and advice from people who have gone through it, who have mastered this area so much better already. And so for me, that's always a lot of fun to take on this project and to learn about it and then finally make a decision about how I want this to be in my life. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I promise I'm gonna get back to making more organizing and decluttering videos soon. Just maybe a couple more weeks and we will have the house pretty much back in order and our bathroom will be done. And then my life is a little bit more normal. It's a little crazy right now because from seven in the morning to pretty much five or six at night, um, someone's working upstairs and I help in between and I have to get my work done and then we have homeschooling. There's just a lot going on right now. So thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful week. I hope to see you soon. And don't forget to check out my blog if you want to follow my journey to grow my family. There are always some updates on there whenever there's something new www.healthyminimalistmom.com. I'll see you soon. Bye.